Ukraine has asked NATO to prepare a sanctions package against Russia in an effort to deter it from starting an invasion. NATO foreign ministers have been meeting for a second day in the Latvian capital Riga, where talks have been dominated by Russia's military buildup on its border with Ukraine. Seven years ago, Russia seized Crimea and then later annexed the territory. The U.S. is particularly concerned over troop movements on the border and what Russia could be planning. We don't know whether President Putin has made the decision to invade. We do know that he is putting in place the capacity to do so on short order should he so decide. So despite uncertainty about intentions and timing, we must prepare for all contingencies while working to see to it that Russia reverses course. Meanwhile, Ukraine's president has said it needs to have direct talks with Moscow to try to end the ongoing war with Russian-backed separatists in the east of the country. More than 14,000 people have died in the conflict since 2014. Let's now go to Kiev and to Peter Dickinson, the Ukrainian editor at the Atlantic Council. Uh, Peter, good to have you on the programme. So fears of this Russian escalation in Ukraine really dominating this NATO uh, foreign minister's uh, meeting. But with Ukraine not a NATO member, what leverage does the alliance really have? Well, thank, thank you for having me, Mariam. It's a pleasure to join you. Yeah, it's, it's limited what NATO can actually uh, put on the table. Uh, at the moment, obviously, um, all sides, uh, NATO itself, um, Ukraine and, and Russia, are, are aware that there is, no, there is no real option of any military involvement from the NATO side. So what we're really talking about is, uh, is economic sanctions, perhaps some political sanctions as well, but fundamentally it will be economic measures uh, that would, that would uh, hopefully restrain Russia and cause them to think twice. And we've had the U.S. Secretary of State talking about measures that have not previously been considered. Some have speculated this may mean removal or restriction of Russia's access to things like the international SWIFT banking system, uh, which would have a major impact on the Russian economy. Uh, the question is whether these economic factors will be enough to deter Russia from something that uh, uh, many believe is, is a fundamental foreign policy uh, uh, priority for, for President Putin, which is to reassert Russian authority over Ukraine. Exactly. So economic sanctions may or may not work. But what about also then restarting dialogue uh, with Russia? That's also being called for. What do you think is really the best approach to try to de-escalate this? Well, Ukraine has been quite vocal in, in recent days, again, saying they want to have direct talk with Russia. They, they want to sit down. You know, the President Zelensky wants to sit down with President Putin. They want to talk. They want to engage. They need to engage. Um, but the question is whether Russia is, 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 has any interest in that kind of head-to-head, -head, you know, face-to-face -face engagement. Uh, on the contrary, um, Russia has been quite clear. Mr. Putin himself wrote a very long uh, essay in the summer of 2021, and then that was followed by a similar essay uh, by his, his, um, his predecessor and former Russian Prime Minister uh, Dmitry Medvedev, in which they both said very clearly that Ukraine was not uh, a, a effectively... was. was was not a sovereign nation, was under the control of the West, and they seem to be looking to speak directly over Ukraine's head to the leaders of the Western world, America and NATO leaders, uh, cutting Ukraine out of a dialogue, so uh, essentially talking about Ukraine without Ukraine. So the question now in terms of dialogue is who would that dialogue be between? Uh, and it's not clear that Russia has any interest in speaking with Ukraine at this point. So um, it may be that uh, Russia is angling for a summit meeting with President Biden. That's certainly something that's being widely speculated at the moment. Uh, will America offer that or not? Also on the question, will it be enough? Um, but I personally have, have significant doubts that Russia has any interest at all engaging with Ukraine directly. So it looks like at the moment it's, it's at, at, the, at the top table, as it were, geopolitically in terms of the international relations, uh, where they're looking to strike some sort of a grand deal.